Tonight, the Reading City Council votes on the fate of the convention center. We have a live report. And the search continues tonight for an Orland man believed drowned in Black Butte Lake. Good evening, I'm Alan Marston. And I'm Kira Clapper. NBC 24 Action News at 5 starts now. You're watching Action News at 5 on NBC 24. Live, local, late breaking. A city that needed a boost got one tonight as exhausted lawmakers pushed their hard-fought debt ceiling compromise toward the finish line on Capitol Hill. And a beloved colleague who many feel symbolizes optimism and renewal appeared to help. Gabby Giffords, she voted yes and helped the U.S. avoid default. Steve Handelsman has the latest. Uh, the bill is passed. Without... Adding to the drama as the House okayed the debt ceiling hike, U.S. Representative Gabrielle Giffords appeared on the floor to vote yes. The Arizona Democrats first return after being shot in the face in Tucson in January. Still, many House members hate the compromise. But default for the United States of America is not an option. So, even some in the Tea Party voted yes. It's not perfect, but it takes us down that first step to start getting out of this. Many Democrats feel Republicans won. There's no balance. There are no revenues. God forbid we would ask, as the Republicans call them, the job creators, the millionaires and billionaires uh, to pay anything. The compromise plan would cut about $1 trillion in spending right away, form a new bipartisan super committee to find another $1.5 trillion in savings by November. If Congress fails to act on those recommendations this year, broad spending cuts are triggered. Cuts in defense spending opposed by conservatives and cuts in social programs opposed by liberals. And gives each party a strong incentive to get a balanced plan done before the end of the year. Do many Democrats now expect tax hikes on the well-off? The answer is... Not only yes, but hell yes. It was a grinding fight. Washington is exhausted. This was a mess. There is no question. It was a circus at times. But in the end, uh, compromise won out. Maybe the Senate still has to vote. Steve Handelsman reporting. The clock keeps ticking. Midnight tomorrow is still the deadline to avoid default. Back here in the North State, the frustration over the debt ceiling is felt by almost everyone, but senior citizens and those reliant on Social Security say they're more concerned over their future now than they've ever been. Action News reporter Derek Demo spoke with local seniors today and joins us now with more. Derek? Alan, mostly everyone I spoke with agrees the entire process to reach an agreement has taken far too long, and despite the likely compromise, they're still worried about the future. It's been a long, drawn-out process for Americans who could do nothing more than wait for congressional leaders to come to some sort of compromise over the nation's debt ceiling. And though it appears the dust is finally settling, some are still wary. It's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. 86-year-old Chico resident Bob Brown is just one of many seniors living at the Oakmont Retirement Community that is outraged over the amount of time it has taken to strike a deal for the debt ceiling. And he says the younger generations will be the ones paying for it in the end. There's no way you guys can survive this. There just isn't, isn't any way it can be paid off. Many seniors are also still worried for their benefits. Social Security, Medicare, and veterans benefits appear to be saved from automatic cuts for now, but they worry their checks could one day stop coming. I know it's deposited for this month, but I don't know about the, how much in the future. If you think my check isn't going to come in, how am I going to get survived next month? How am I going to pay my rent? How am I going to pay the rent here? It's scary. Some were even astonished at the lack of compromise shown by our nation's leaders. When they swear a new uh, legislator in, that they must swear to compromise. <laughs> Otherwise, they're on the wrong field. For many of these seniors, the uphill battle to strike a deal has tarnished their faith in the legislation and in those ultimately deciding their fate. I can't say I can trust them. It's their way or no way. And that's sad. That's not what the nation was built on. Now that Congress has passed the debt deal, it moves to the Senate where a vote is expected by tomorrow midnight. Live in the newsroom for NBC 24 Action News, I'm Derek Demo. Thank you for that report, Derek. Within the next few hours, we will know the fate of the Reading Convention Center. The City Council is poised to vote on a plan that would privatize the use of the building. Action News reporter Colin Ligren is standing by outside City Council, or rather at our Reading Bureau, with the latest. Colin. 
Kira, city council's decision has been looming for quite some time. In April, the city manager told council that the convention center was costing the city $1.4 million a year, and the city could no longer afford to keep it open. Soon after, Reading-based Bethel Church came forward and offered to rent the center for their own use and keep it open for community events. People in support of keeping the center open rallied today outside City Hall. They are worried that the North State's largest convention center will not be as accessible if Bethel is in charge. Reading's Director of Community Services had this to say. You know, it's a, it's a trade-off. You know, they're offering to pay rent uh, for the use of the building, um, but they will take up a good chunk of time um, in exchange for that. They were going to close it down. so. Uh we uh, came forward and said, well, we could do this and, and we can grow our school as well as, as uh, keep this open for the community. Those outside City Hall today don't think Bethel's the right choice. They want to keep it open and have a company called Mesa Productions manage the center. They're worried that Bethel will only be required to offer about half of the events that the center currently offers. The meeting started at about 5 p.m., so we should know the fate of the center in just a few hours. Reporting live in the Mount Shasta Mall for Action News, I'm Colin Ligren. Thanks, Colin. T turning farmland into new shopping mall. It's a controversial topic before the Shasta County Board of Supervisors tonight. In a public hearing, supervisors are considering an Ohio-based company's proposal to build a 92-acre complex near Knighton Road, south of Reading. The plan would pave over fertile farmland to make way for over 700,000 square feet of commercial development. Tonight, supervisors will hear comments from residents and discuss the environmental impact report. The project would require rezoning from agriculture to planned development. A North State school may lose its charter. The Chico Unified school, school District Board of Trustees is holding a special meeting tonight to discuss revoking the charter for Chico Green School, which you may recall has been accused of Brown Act violations, among other allegations. The Brown Act requires meetings to be open to the public. School leaders will be asked to explain issues with its curriculum and why they let 11th graders enroll, despite the fact that the school was chartered only to offer classes to 9th and 10th graders. The school was brought before the CUSD board before in September 2010 on many of these same allegations. A fire in an Orland garage has explosive results this afternoon. Firefighters were called to a home off County Roads 17 and 8 around 240. The homeowner told firefighters he was working on his truck in a detached garage. The fire erupted when he went into his home for a few minutes. By the time firefighters arrived, the roof of the garage had collapsed and several propane tanks as well as ammunition in the garage had exploded. Crews were able to keep the blaze from spreading to the home or any other nearby buildings. Time now for our first look at the conditions. For that, we check in with Chief Meteorologist Chris Kuiper, who is back with us in the Aki Weather Center. Chris. Yeah, good to be back on a very typical start to August weather-wise for us. Temperatures certainly warm across the valley, but not blazing hot. It could easily be 110 out there, but instead we're seeing middle and upper 90s in the valley. It'll make you sweat, certainly, but it could be a lot hotter. 97, our current temperature in ready. We've got 93 at the moment in Chico. And as we look ahead towards tomorrow, boy, I hope you like today because we don't have a whole lot of change coming our way tomorrow. 74 degrees at 8 o'clock in the morning. Another nice, comfortable start to the day if you got some outside chores to do by noontime starting to heat up but certainly not hot by noontime standards in the beginning of August and then by the end of the afternoon certainly heating up pretty quickly we'll be in the middle and upper 90s one more time I'll come back in a bit we'll take a look at that extended forecast we'll talk about the thunderstorms in the mountains see if they're still out there and we'll see if there is some blazing heat in our seven-day forecast coming up all right, thank you, Chris. Oroville police are looking for a fifth suspect in connection with the Alano Club vandalism and thrift store fire that happened on July 14th. Officers say one of the suspects arrested last month, Crystal Palmer, admitted to starting the fire. And she also identified other people who were involved, she said, including 60-year-old Andrew Cipolla Jr., his daughter Karina Tenbrink, and a family friend, Christina Murphy. Palmer also identified Tyson Francini as a participant. Authorities say he is believed to be in Idaho. Anyone with information about Francini's whereabouts is asked to call the Oroville Police Department. A Chico man is arrested after authorities find drugs under his car. It happened just yesterday evening on Hooker Oak Avenue near St. Francis Drive. Police say Jacob Maloney collided with a parked car. 
causing his car to turn onto its side. While investigating, a firefighter reportedly found a metal can attached to the underside of Maloney's vehicle. Well, inside that can were two bags of cocaine and several prescription drugs. Maloney was booked into the Butte County Jail for driving under the influence and several other drug-related charges. Several Chico businesses could be facing fines or worse for selling alcohol to minors. Flyers, Chevron on Notre Dame, as well as Fair Street Market and the Park Avenue 76 station were all cited last Monday. Police say a minor working with the department's minor decoy operation was able to purchase alcohol at those businesses. All three locations could face fines and have their alcoholic beverage license either suspended or revoked. A Reading man is behind bars after leading police on a high-speed chase and then having to be rescued from a dam near the Sacramento River. The pursuit started just before midnight last night on Hartnell Avenue, where officers tried to pull over 31-year-old Bouchon Fenchampone. Fenchampone sped off and eventually crashed into a guardrail on Riverside Drive. He then got out of his car, ran away, and hopped onto some scaffolding on the acid diversion dam. After several hours, officers were able to grab him and pull him over the safety cables. He was booked into the Shasta County Jail for DUI and evading a peace officer. An Orland man is presumed drowned on Black Butte Lake after leaping from a boat last night. We'll have the latest on the